Hi everyone, welcome to the Tutor Med channel where medicine is simplified. In this video, we want to look at some tricks to use to remember everything about antibiotics. And as usual, my name is Dr. Obain Frempong, your tutor. First, let's look at the various antibiotic classes. How do we remember the various antibiotic classes? Let's see that with a mnemonic. The mnemonic is Antibiotic classification can prove stubborn to learn for medical graduates. Antibiotic classification can prove stubborn to learn for medical graduates. And so that is our mnemonic. And so antibiotic stands for aminoglycosides or aminoglycosides. Classification for cephalosporins or cephalosporins. Can for carbapenems. Proof stands for penicillins. Stubborn for sulfonamides. Two for tetracyclines. Learn for lincosamides. Four also is for fluoroquinolones. Medical for macrolides. And then lastly, graduates for glycopeptides. And so this awesome mnemonic should help us remember the major antibiotic classes. The mnemonic again, antibiotic classification can prove stubborn to learn for medical graduates. Now for the mechanism of action of each of the antibiotic classes we've seen, we will say that antibiotics primarily work against bacteria and they do so by attacking certain unique parts of the bacteria. Now let's assume this is a bacterium. It has especially for the gram positives, it has a thick peptidoglycan cell wall. And in this cytoplasm, it has got a nuclear material or its DNA material. Then it has ribosomes, like I have indicated, scattered in the cytoplasm. These ribosomes are involved in protein synthesis and are usually made up of two subunits, the 30S subunits and then the 50S subunit. So generally, looking at this schematic diagram, the antibiotics work in three ways. We have those which inhibit cell wall synthesis, those which inhibit DNA synthesis or affect the integrity of DNA synthesis, and then those which inhibit protein synthesis. And so let's see how or where each of the antibiotic classes fall under using these three categories. Now we begin with those which work on the ribosomes, thereby inhibiting protein synthesis. They can be remembered with a mnemonic MOLT, M-E-L-T. And so M for macrolides, A for aminoglycosides, L for lincosamides, and then T for the tetracyclines. Now remember we mentioned that the ribosomes are made up of two subunits, the 30S subunit and then the 50S subunit. And so which of them works on the 30S subunit and which of them targets the 50S subunit? Easy peasy. Using the mnemonic mode, let's do 50, 30, 50, 30. That is all. 50, 30, 50, 30. So it means that Macrolides and lincosamides target the 50S subunit, while the aminoglycoside and the tetracyclines would target the 30S subunit. Now, how do we identify members of each class here? Macros macrolides, sorry, usually end with the suffix thromycins, and so examples would be erythromycin, azithromycin, 
clarithromycin and so macrolides are the thromycins then a aminoglycosides or aminoglycosides they are the mycins or the casins except for two common antibiotics van vancomycin and then clindamycin although they end with mycin please remember that they are not aminoglycosides and so with these two out of the way the the aminoglycosides include gentamicin streptomycin tobramycin canamycin and then amikacin then l lincosamides here the antibiotic is clindamycin remember that clindamycin is a lincosamide then we have tetracyclines and they end with the suffix cyclines so we have tetracycline doxycycline minocycline and as a side note i want to say that the antibiotics which inhibit protein synthesis are generally bacteriostatic they are not bactericidal it means they do not um they do not kill the bacteria but they inhibit bacterial growth please take note of that now apart from the protein synthesis inhibitors we have the inhibitors of the dna synthesis or dna integrity and they are two the first group are the fluoroquinolones and so their mechanism of action please know that they inhibit dna synthesis and they end in the fluoxacins so they are the fluoxacin so examples include levofloxacin ciprofloxacin and then norfloxacin then we have sulfonamides and they are antifolates i intentionally put the fo in blue to highlight the fact that they are antifolates you know folate is needed in the synthesis of dna and so sulfonamides are antifolates and so they also kind of inhibit dna synthesis the example here is sulfur metoxazole trimetoprene the sulfur metoxazole is the sulfonamide last we have the cell wall inhibitors once you know that malt are or the malt guys are the protein synthesis inhibitors and then the dna synthesis inhibitors are the fluoroquinolones and the sulfonamides you can safely assume that the rest are all cell wall inhibitors per our mnemonic and so the first group are the penicillins they end in cellin as their suffix so we have penicillin g as an example penicillin v oxacillin nafcillin ampicillin amoxicillin piperacillin etc now as a side note i would like to say that there are a group of compounds called beta lactamase inhibitors on their own they do not have any antimicrobial property except when they are combined with penicillins or cephalosporins and so they kind of increase the stability of penicillins and cephalosporins examples include glavulanic acid sulfabactam or sorbactam sorry and then tazobactam and so you hear some combinations like amoxicillin glavulanic acid abbreviated or shortened as amoxiclav you can hear piperacillin tazobactam so that is a penicillin combined with a beta lactamase inhibitor we also have keftriazone sorbactam and so please take note of these beta lactamase inhibitors yes and so apart from the penicillins another group of um antibiotics which work on the cell wall we have the cephalosporins and they have a prefix cef kef so we have keftriazone kefroxine keftazidine and then kefotaxin then we have the carbapenems they end with the suffix penems so we have meropenem and then imipenem cilistatin then last we have the glycopeptides and the glycopeptides include the vancomycin and then the televancin and so this brings us to the end of how to simplify or how to remember the various antibiotic classification and then their mechanism of action in our subsequent videos we'll take each class one after the other and simplify thank you for watching this video and please do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel see you in our next lecture and until then bye Thank you.